Today's guest is the daughter of missionary parents who lived her childhood years on the field in Thailand. Later, she came back to Canada, where she started a promising career as a television producer. But it wasn't long before she too felt the call to serve in the field, and today she and her husband have become second generation leaders in the mission. You're going to hear Becky Watson's amazing story on Lifeline today, so stay tuned. Welcome to Lifeline Today. So glad you joined us on the program. It's going to be an exciting program. We've got some wonderful things to share with you and a great guest. Remember, the prayer lines are open. They always are during our program. Uh, Joan, we should mention, though, that uh, if they get voicemail, which happens, mm -hmm. sometimes there's just so many that come in at one time. Yeah that uh, just leave an, a voicemail and they will follow up. Yeah, Eventually, you know. you'll get a call back. <laughs> uh, we love hearing from you as well. Thank you for partnering and supporting yeah. this program. God bless you as you do that. Well, today we have a wonderful person who we know very yes, well. Right. Has a long history with us, but you're going to be blessed when you hear her story. Yeah. Welcome to the program, Becky, Becky Watson. Watson. Thank you. Well, Thanks for all. having me. It's awesome you know, to Becky, be I should just introduce you. You grew up in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Uh, daughter of missionaries who are very good friends of ours and you and your husband Matt uh, you right now you pastor the Victory Church in mm -hmm. Siracha yeah, we call pastor yeah and in Thailand you call pastor and also the student body of Victory Asia Bible College mm -hmm. and you're the leader of VW Victory Asia's worship band yes. which we're going to hear about a little bit later on another program but uh, wow uh, welcome it's so Thank good you. to have you it's awesome to be here I love I love Canada but I love Canada because of the heart that you guys have for it you know yeah. I got a lot of my training on the mission field by working here with you guys yeah. so that's why so you were excited. our producer mm -hmm. yeah. um, we did at that time four one-hour programs every week yeah and uh, you were our producer which was a phenomenal responsibility we were busy. and uh, when your parents approached us said uh, we need Becky to move to Thailand and mm -hmm. look after the ministry, help us look after the ministry, we said, no. <laughs> Inside, we said, yeah. no. But no, we, we graciously yeah. released you. We understood yeah. it. So, but, Be uh, Becky, you were two yeah. when your mom and dad moved to Thailand. Yeah. Uh, you speak fluent Thai. Mm -hmm. Just tell amazing? us a little bit about those early days yeah. really quickly because we want to move on to today. Yeah. But uh, it's an amazing story what your mom and dad did. Yeah, they're actually a little bit crazy for Jesus, which is good. You know, you kind of have to have a little bit of uh, definitely craziness in order yeah. to do some of those things. But it was awesome. I was two years old, so I didn't have a choice in the matter, obviously. Yeah. But it's the best decision ever, you know, just growing up in the mission field. Um, my parents, when they first went, they adopted a whole bunch of kids, 30 some kids. And the whole goal was to build a family, a Christian family, a godly family in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up in an environment where we had a lot of kids, a lot of trouble, a lot of, but a lot of ministry. Yeah. Because even as a young kid, uh, our parents, my parents really wanted us to be involved in the ministry that they were doing. So it wasn't right. like they were pastoring, they were leading worship, and we were just hanging around. Yeah. We became the El Shaddai ministry family. So yeah. Yeah. Right. when we went out and did evangelism, we were the guys that would set up the chairs, pass out the p pamphlets, uh, lead the worship, <laughs> do the kids' ministry, do the prayer ministry, all of that. You know. So my, my childhood was just being in my family, loving my family, learning how to work together as a family and also being in ministry from the youngest age that I can yeah. remember. Yeah. I, I know that your dad has told us sometimes people come and when you were younger, mm -hmm. they'd come and they'd pray for you and, and you know, console you because mm -hmm. you had to grow up in this big family in yeah. Thailand and, and, and how, you know, how hard done by you were yeah and you've always said it was never like that at no, all it, it was, was such an adventure it wasn't actually a concept that even entered my mind until I came to Canada yeah <laughs> because there was a few seasons where we came back to Canada for some schooling and training yeah. and uh, it wasn't until people would ask me questions like you know how does it feel to have to share your parents with so many kids yeah and be like uh you know I never thought about that before. <laughs> yeah. it feels great you know or or did you find it hard that you have to miss out on so much of Canadian life and I'm like yeah. 
I had no idea I was yeah. missing yeah, out, you know, yeah. because we had so much fun. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't just the fun. It just was that the fact that we, as a family, we knew we were doing something important. Yeah. Even as a young kid, I knew what I was doing was for the kingdom of God. And so we found great joy in serving Jesus yeah. together. Well, and you know, there is statistically mm -hmm. um, many missionaries who have challenges with yeah. their kids, right? Yeah. So this is a really a, a, an exceptional case. Mm -hmm. But I think the one of the primary reasons is uh, right away it was you started with a whole children's home. Yeah. And but didn't call it like an orphanage. It was a family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were treated um, how many there were 30 or 30, so. Some, yeah. And your <laughs> your parents just treated them like they're our kids. Yeah. yeah. And I think that set the tone. And also the credit to my parents too for never treating us like we were missing out, you know? Yeah. I never once heard mom and dad say, I'm so sorry we brought you to the mission field, yeah. or wow. I'm so sorry you're missing out on family yeah. in Canada. They would always just say, wow, what an adventure we're on, yeah. you know? Yeah. What a privilege we have to serve God together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right, yeah. and you did serve God together. Mm -hmm as a family, yeah. which I think is really incredible, yeah. you know. I think a lot of people miss out on that because even as a kid, like any ministry that your parents do is your ministry, yeah. Yeah. right? Because you're, you're not disconnected from each other. You're one unit. And so yeah. when you're allowed to be involved in that, it helps deepen your relationship with God, your trust in God, your faith yeah. in God, and it yeah. gives you the skills from when you're young. You know, well, I had the privilege right? of going over and <laughs> staying with you for a while. And it was really profound. Mm -hmm. um, I just remember one experience is they sent one of the kids, mm -hmm. not you, but one of the Thai kids with me, uh, a young girl, I think. And okay. we had to go to uh, Bangkok okay. and speak at a church. Well, you know, that's quite an <laughs> eye-opening yeah. experience. The traffic in Bangkok is interesting. <laughs> so crazy. But I uh, just thought, what a what a... It was such an enriching experience. I enjoyed it yeah. so much. Yeah. So then, Becky, you and your family came back to Canada mm -hmm. so that you could finish up your education mm -hmm. here. And uh, when you were finished your education, you were in college, mm -hmm. and then you were finished. Uh, we hired you on as a producer mm -hmm. in our ministry at the Miracle Channel at the time, yeah. and you produced our program. And uh, we have to say, I told you before the program, Dick's mm -hmm. going to spend half the program <laughs> telling you that you were the best producer we've ever oh, had. Awesome. Well, yeah. you were uh, just an amazing girl. And you I think part of it was it, because yeah. of your upbringing in mm -hmm. the family that yeah. you you know, grew up in and you were uh, young and energetic and full of ideas mm -hmm. and, you know, just such a help. And so we want to honor you for that and yes. thank you for that. But then your dad came to us one day and he said, he said to us, we would really like you to release Becky mm -hmm. to come back to Thailand <laughs> and work with us. That was very hard for us, mm -hmm. but we knew what it would feel like if we were your mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And so we said, yes, you know what, we could release Becky. And it was also in your heart, wasn't it, to go back? Yeah, I kind of always knew in my heart that I would end up back there. I, I never had like a clear voice of God or direction, you know, I'm called to Thailand, but I just kind of had a knowing in my spirit, yeah. you know, that I would end up there. Yeah. And part of my ending up there, um, the training that I needed was actually working here, you know? Yeah. And um, aside from my parents' own walk with God and relationship with God, it's what I learned and experienced at the Miracle Channel that really set me up for ministry in Thailand. Wow. So mm -hmm. I need to give honor back to you guys because mm -hmm. the fact that you would hire me when I had no experience at the time, you know, and I was, I mean, I was 19, but I looked like I was 12. I was young, <laughs> you know, but the fact that you still trusted God. And I remember when you actually approached me about doing the producing thing because I'd been a guest coordinator at first and you said, I don't know why, but I feel like God's telling me to ask you to take on this position, you wow. know? And just to, just to have that, that honor to know that you had the confidence in the voice of God, even though I didn't have the training to say, I see something in you. Mm -hmm. And just being around faith, I think that was a big thing, being around uh, just such, you know, such vision for Canada that that just really impacted my heart because before I had a vision for the things that were in front of us but to understand that you could have like a national uh -huh. vision a, a vision for a nation a broader, you know? yeah. yeah it just did something in my heart and and watching you guys walk through that really taught me a lot of what I needed to know about the right heart posture about mm -hmm. standing in faith about carrying the right burdens you're not not being overwhelmed by the bigness of the task or the vision mm -hmm. yeah. or anything like that so I would not be able to do be doing what I'm doing in Thailand apart from the wow. training here, you know. Wow. So yeah, God knew what he was doing 
Yeah. And he had the process, yeah. and yeah. It was and yeah. isn't it interesting that in the course of all of this, you met mm -hmm. your husband, Matt, who's yeah. a wonderful guy, yes, he and he's Canadian, mm -hmm. but he, uh, you had dated for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then he chose to go to Bible college. In Thailand. In Thailand, yeah. and you stayed here, yeah. and you were working here. Yeah, just tell us it was a, a big bit about that. deal for him because he didn't want to go to Bible school because of me. At that time, he wasn't sure he wanted to marry me, you know. But um, he really felt God was calling him to get extra education. And I never even suggested Thailand. I wanted to, but I just kept my mouth <laughs> sick. You know, I'm like, God has to speak to you, not me. But yeah. when he decided to go and then, you know, God did a series of miracles wow. with his tuition and stuff, he ended up there. And while he was in Thailand, God spoke to him very clearly that mm -hmm. this is where I've called you, wow. you know, because he had no idea about his future. And even when we started dating, you know, I knew I was going to eventually end up in Thailand. He had no clue, no right. calling on mission, nothing, yeah. you know. So for both of us, it was a real walk of faith and trusting God that he knew what he was doing. Originally, I never thought I would get married just because I never thought I would marry a Thai guy. I just something in my heart. Yeah. And um, I never thought I'd meet a Canadian guy that'd be willing to go with me over there. So I just kind of resigned myself at the young age of, you know, 18 to be single forever. But God knew what he was doing. We have an American son-in-law, too, mm. that never thought he would be called to yeah. Canada. But God has his ways of That's doing right. things. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? You're, you just have so much of your parents' DNA. It's just crazy. Uh, yeah. No, but that that's. Mm -hmm. But doesn't that show you the right foundation? Yeah. Yes. This Amen. goes counter to our culture, Western yeah. culture. You yeah. know, where you said, I, I'll stay single, but yeah. this is what I'm going to do, and God will bring the right. See, that was the right. God came first, and yeah. his purpose for your life yeah. before even who do I marry and yeah. what we do. Yeah. And I, I, th I think God's really honored you in that yeah. sense, right? Yeah. Yes. It's been amazing. So you ended up in Thailand, married to Matt, yeah. and just talk to us about this. It was several years before you really knew or felt in your heart that, you know, you would end up taking over mm -hmm. what your mom and dad had begun mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, what was your first position as a couple when you went back to Thailand? What did you do? Well, it's really interesting because we had an idea um, of wanting to plant a church and I wanted to really emphasize worship that was kind of in my heart mm. um, But when we got to Thailand, there was so much going on in the ministry and I could see the burden on dad's Life, you know, yeah, and um, not long after landing in Thailand We were still trying to figure out what we wanted to do and how we were gonna make it work I took a trip with dad to Nepal actually and while we were on the plane he had I thought it was a heart attack mm -hmm. but it, it just ended up being something else, but it was from stress and just through that whole experience of seeing the pressure that he was under, I realized that what he really needed was administrative help. Wow. Yeah. You know, and that wasn't something that I felt I was specifically called to, but I just saw like that's what the need was. So um, one of my brothers had just finished uh, his schooling in Philippines Bible school there, and he also had the same idea to do like a worship thing. So mm. I really had to lay that down. It was something I really wanted to do, but I was like, hey, like I'm just going to fill the need because I realized that if I couldn't serve where it was needed, it didn't matter what God gave me. I'm, I'm not going to be good to anybody if I can't feel a need, right? Yeah. Yeah. If I'm creating something for myself, it's not going to be helpful. So the first few years, it was basically just administrative stuff. We were dealing with a building project that mm -hmm. had run into some issues. So we had to figure out financially what was going on. And it was just like managing projects and people and bringing everything into alignment, mm -hmm. which was a huge challenge. But every step of the way, you know, God gives you wisdom. You make mistakes. You learn as you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then you learn that you really can do anything that you put your mind to. You know, wow. if God's put his hand on that thing in your life, then you yeah. can yeah. figure it when, out. When did you and Matt begin to feel that maybe God was leading us to, you know, uh, transition into leadership here? Um, it was never like a thing we ever thought about, uh, except for our leaders began to tell us, right? We feel mm -hmm. like kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It was never anything that I aspired to. But just the more that we were entrusted with responsibility, that kind of was the natural thing that was happening. Mm. And honestly, in the beginning, I resisted. Yeah. Because A, I didn't want the burden. Like, it's a big job. You know? Yeah. And B, I didn't feel qualified for it yeah. at all. Mm. And, um, but it's the same thing. The same, the same surrender I had to have when I first came to Thailand to do administration instead of, you know, worship. Yeah. It's the same surrender I have to have in everything, you know, and you just have to trust God with the process. Same with producing, you know, I wasn't mm -hmm. qualified. I didn't know what I was doing. It was very <laughs> overwhelming. 
<laughs> but you surrender and you trust God with the process. And so the yeah. more that we could just kind of see it naturally falling into our laps, the more we had those conversations like, are we going to do this? Because we have to be in agreement. I can't do it by myself and he can't yeah. do it by himself. Yeah. And the more we talked about it, we just, you know, recognize that, yeah, this is, this is what we need to do. This is, you know, the, the need that's in yeah. front of us and we need to fill it. It is so encouraging to me, mm -hmm. both to Jonah and me, to see how uh, beautiful the succession has been. Mm -hmm. And I know it's still in process, but yeah. um, <laughs> just to, uh, no, of course, there's advantage. You are their natural yeah. daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But still, uh, just to see how well it's gone, but how it's not just, oh, now we have and the next generation will put up with it. No, it's almost like it's gone up another level mm -hmm. and an even more proficient. And what an encouragement, what a model yeah. mm -hmm. for others. Really and it is. Look how you extend the timeline of influence of that ministry in mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, all because of that. So mm -hmm. you say, I didn't really feel called, but your choices Becky, I want you to see this, are producing wow. phenomenal, mm -hmm. phenomenal results yeah. and rewards, I might add. Yeah. 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 So yeah. now you are, have become second generation mm -hmm. ministry leaders there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Becky, just tell us a little bit about what you and Matt have done mm -hmm. differently and what your mom and dad have allowed you to do mm -hmm. differently. And this is a big thing because, you know, sometimes we just want to hang on to how we did it. Yeah. But the second generation has to do things the way, you know, God wants mm -hmm. yeah. you to do them. What have you done differently and what, have, what has remained the same? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the thing that's remained the same mostly is always keeping um, like the attitude of family in our team. Mm. Um, that's what mom and dad learned from, you know, raising 30 plus kids together yeah. and through all of the church planting stuff is it really is a family dynamic. Yeah. And we wouldn't have the success that we have today without that, you know, like God is a generational God and he calls us into community and into tribe and you don't have to be born into it to be into that tribe. Mm -hmm. But once he's planted you into family, you're there forever. Yeah. Even if he, you know, moves you on to another area or a position, it's always family. So that the way that they do ministry like that, that's something that we have to keep going forever because otherwise we're going to lose out. There's no hirelings in our ministry. There are people wow. that get paid and people that don't get paid, but there are no hirelings, you know. Yeah. Right. And oh. even if people don't realize they're getting adopted into a family when they first come in, you know, sometimes <laughs> we actually hire staff in our schools that aren't believers, but that's what happens is yeah. we make them family. Wow. And once they experience that, they don't want to disconnect, you know. Everybody wants a place where they can yeah. really belong. And I think the other thing that we've done the same with mom and dad is there's never ever been any control you know they've never said i'm going to put you in leadership but you have to lead this way or you yeah. have to do it this you know in this manner and mm -hmm. so that's one of the things that i've really learned that when i see um something on somebody's life to lead an area for example to manage a school or to do something like that when i release them in it i have to also release control you know yeah. they have the principles they have the foundation we have the same heart we have relationship and you have to work together from mm. that relationship. Yeah. If ever I try to work from a position of I'm the boss, I'm the whatever, <laughs> then, yeah. then we've wrecked it, you know. Mm. Yeah. And so even in any correction or disciplinary issues, it always comes from that position of relationship, not, not yeah. from, you know, anything wow. else. And so, wow. so I can really see there's been a, an incredible, you know, like a demeanor attitude mm. uh, in this transition. What would you say you know about that you know mm -hmm. one to another like your generation to the generation that actually you know built mm -hmm. what you're taking over uh, i think one of the first things that you have to have especially as an, a younger generation taking up the baton mm -hmm. is you really have to have uh, honor in your heart for your leaders and it's not just an honor like i honor you for the things that you've already done but you see that it's god's call on their life it's the, it's the image of God on their life that's caused them to have the success that they have. And so when you, are, when you are aware of the weight of that, you know, there's a weight that comes, like a spiritual weight that comes from that. It's not just like they're skilled or they, you know, know what they're doing in the natural realm. It's an actual calling that God's put wow. on our life, right? Yeah. Right. And so that's the thing that... Um, is the most precious, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing that I value the most. And that's why I have, like, to a certain degree, a fear of the Lord in my life about it because I'm not just messing with mom and dad's legacy. I'm messing with God's call on somebody's life Absolutely. for the nations, right? So you have to really um, 
respect it. And if you ever even have a thought that I'm going to do it better, you know, I'm going to do it uh, in, a, in a bigger way or somehow I'm going to fix some of the... If you have that inkling of a thought in your heart, you're the wrong person mm. because wow. it's, it's, even if you have that in your heart, then, you know, you need to repent because that's not what it's about. You come under to, to take on the responsibility that God's given you and you have to really understand that it's not my thing. Yeah. You know, they're passing me something that's not mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm just the steward of something that actually belongs, yeah, right. not just to, to God, but also to all of the nations that we're working together yeah. with. You know, it's not my thing. So I, I really have a fear of the Lord in my life about it. Um, sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming, but yeah. in the same way that God's trusted me with everything he's given me up to this point, I also trust his goodness in my life. You know what, Becky, I want to tell you this, and it's a word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You have a Daniel spirit. <laughs> the spirit of a Daniel. Now, if you read the book of Daniel mm -hmm. and yeah. you read other comments about Daniel, mm -hmm. in, uh, as a matter of fact, in Ezekiel 14, 14, it mentions three people who would stand in intercession before God mm -hmm. and had incredible uh, sway with God. Mm -hmm. Daniel was one of them. Mm -hmm. He said, if uh, it, it's actually a judgment on the Israel. And he said, even wow. if Daniel one of the three stood and intercede, they would only save themselves. Daniel had that high mm. of yes. influence with God. And I see a Daniel spirit in you. Yeah, you. So you're a female Daniel spirit. <laughs> and, <laughs> but you. it's definitely yeah. true. You and God's Matt. given you incredible mm. vision, yeah. incredible wisdom. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back and talk to you a little more right after this, but yeah. I want to share these thoughts with you. is a divine gift that is granted by God whenever any believer asks. James 1, 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. This verse reminds us of the importance of asking God to show us his views. When we ask for wisdom, he will give us his perspective and his standards. This is powerful and comforting. Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. To receive him is to recognize your need of him. Cry out to him. God will answer your prayer. Are you needing wisdom today? Let us pray with you for God's wisdom and revelation for whatever you're going through. Our number is 403-942-0123 or email us at prayercenter at dickandjoan.com. We're talking with Becky Watson. She's a longtime friend, yeah. worked with us many years ago. Uh, but let me just say, an extraordinary person doing something so amazing. Uh, we've had her parents on the program, Al and Terry Purvis, and they're apostolic leaders in Southeast Asia. And uh, today, Becky is stepping in the role of taking more and more of the leadership of the ministry. And we should mention, too, that the ministry is not just Thailand anymore, but you've reached out uh, apostolically to 12 other nations. Yeah. So, Becky, how are, are you and Matt moving into leadership in that area as well? Yeah, well, there's there's a lot of uh, planning that goes into that. For example, we have a yearly conference that we call Summit. This year, we're doing something called Young Lions, which is like a pre-summit meeting. So all of the young and upcoming leaders from all of those nations, we're wow. gathering together, and we're going to spend, you know, like four or five days together just to build relationship, build covenant, pray together. Um, you know, just you really have to have, you really have to have a heart, one for each other, in order mm -hmm. for this thing to work, because... Um, if if I was ever just instituted in and there's no relationship, it's not going to last very yeah. long, you know. So the whole passing the baton thing has been a very um, well-planned out strategy. We've spent a lot of time talking about it. That's we teach good. about it all the time and we wow. make plans to get together so that our nations are healthy as we go That's forward. That's really good. That's wonderful. We, I, we have to ask you the question mm -hmm. before we go today. Uh, do you, Becky, have words of wisdom for those who are preparing to pass the baton to the next generation or and or to those that are receiving the baton and really taking on something that is being entrusted to them mm -hmm. at this time that someone else has paid the price for. Yeah. 
Well, I think for those that are getting ready to pass the baton, you really need to pass it on to somebody who is a son and a daughter, you know. It doesn't have to be your blood related, but somebody who really is a son and a daughter in the faith. Because I see a lot of times, especially with like bigger churches and more established ministries, they, they're looking for people that have the skill, that have the experience. But if you don't have the heart, you've already lost it. You know, the skill and the experience, God can teach you. And the team that you have around you will help bring you to that place. But if you don't have the heart, then, then you know, so yeah. don't ever pass the baton to somebody who looks like they're the right fit just because they have all of the qualifications. Yeah. If they don't wow. honor you as a father and a mother in the faith, stay away because they're not going to be able to take yeah. it to the next level. One, one word I've heard from <laughs> many ministries is don't skip a generation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, you know, if you're going to have succession, it should be the next generation. So in my case, in Jones' case, it would be uh, people the age of our kids yeah. and, uh, or, or our kids. And that's yeah. true for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly the model. Mm -hmm. And I think there's wisdom in there. I, I'm sure God can use somebody yeah, that skips a generation, but it's yeah. just common wisdom mm -hmm. is what we're saying. Yeah. But I'm seeing such a fruitful and blessed uh, transition here. Right. And yeah. that I really think is powerful. And for those that are receiving the baton, even now, I'm young, I'm in my 40s, young 40s. Um, <laughs> but there's people you're that just I'm, a kid. I'm actively <laughs> training now, you know, yeah. you don't wait until you're in your 60s or 70s to be like, who do I pass the baton on to? Wow. I'm training now to pass the baton on to those other people mm. that I'm mentoring. And they may not be the ones that take over what I take over. But you always have to be learning to train up and release people. And if you have that experience with doing it even now as a young person, then yeah. you have to be ready when yeah. it's time. Oh, that's really good. It's very, very good yeah. words of wisdom uh, there. You know, we've had Becky's parents on the program multiple times. Yeah. Actually, it's really an amazing story. But today, you're hearing probably something that you will hear so rarely. Yeah. When you see this kind of uh, blessing going generation to generation yeah. in a ministry, and we have to honor God for that. That yeah. is just amazing. But Becky, it's because of your spirit. Yes. You have your dad's spirit, <laughs> but it's because of that that mm -hmm. uh, this is going so well. And because and people like you investing in me too, you know. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, we <laughs> we had the biggest challenge in our lives was releasing Becky back to her parents <laughs> when she was working for us. We, when we were asked, we said, "Oh no, do, do we have to do this?" Yeah. Uh, but of course, we did willingly yeah. because you know. Uh, we understood. We Look understood the, the call of God. Yeah. We're so Amen. thankful yeah. that you're, you're very where proud of you what are. you're doing. Yeah, very and proud uh, of you. really encouraged today. Yeah. Just really encouraged. You know, I have full confidence in what mm. you will do, and yeah. and we'll see much, much more. Yeah. Thank you for being a part of the program. You yeah. know, you partner with us, but we also partner with ministries like this, and mm -hmm. we have a long history with many. Yeah. And so uh, this is one ministry we've always walked very closely with. So thank you for that. Thank you, Becky, for being on the program. Thank you. Uh, you know, we'd love to pray for you. The prayer lines are always open, yeah. even after the program. So yeah. feel free to call. Now let's pray together and believe that Canada will Amen. be saved. Ken. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for partnering with us. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments about the program. To watch past episodes, learn about the ministry, or contact us, visit our website at dickandjoan.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and on our YouTube channel, Dick and Joan TV.